Welcome everyone to our Seed Storyteller series with my dear, extraordinary sister, Rachel Starkey, founder of Transformation Textiles. Um, the purpose of this conversation is to share with you, to share with each other, these amazing people, everyday change makers, we call ourselves and we call them, um, that are doing um, incredible things around the world in a beautiful array of ways. Not every way is the same, thank goodness. So um, you're gonna hear Rachel's story here in a minute. Um, but let me, so my name is Sarah Davis and Tracy, founder of Seeds of Exchange. And um, there's all kinds of other fun info about me and the work we're up to um, in the description of this webinar. But I just wanna get right to it. So I wanna read to you uh, briefly about my dear sister, Rachel. Um, and then we're going to dive in. So transformation textile brings opportunity to women, creates jobs, makes it possible for all to have access to affordable sanitary supplies and provides health education. Rachel's passion, dignity, hope, opportunity. Today, she's going to share an innovation of hers, her intellectual property that has made life better for many women around the world. We promise to keep it real and talk about what's hard, invite you to share your own commitments and join the story. This is um, not about um, perfect stories. It's about real stories and, and how we can loop in to one another's stories and really make a difference and, and feel good as we go about our lives. Um, in the description is also uh, a whole bunch of ways that you can join the fund um, with us. We have a everyday philanthropy fundraising campaign. We're looking to raise two thousand dollars this month, and we already have a thousand dollar match, so we're halfway there um, to ship a container of um, sanitary supplies uh, to uh, refugee camps in Iraq. Um, but we'll talk about that in a minute, and there's many other things you can do. So dive into the um, the description. Um, but Rachel, what time of day is it for you right now in Egypt? It is eight at night. Okay. All right. So it's uh, eleven seventeen for me here in in Colorado, and wherever you are coming to us from, welcome. We believe that there are no accidents, and if you stumbled onto this live. Um, is destiny. So welcome. Thank you for joining us. And um, in a minute, we're going to dive into Rachel's story. But before we do, we want to start the way we often do, which is um, with a moment to be still. Here in America, we're right in the, in the swing of things with the holiday season and Christmas. And it's very busy and life is full with kids. And I know a lot of people in my life that are struggling with health and finances and just the heart of life. So while this is a global change-making conversation, we wanna acknowledge that we're each individual human beings that have hopes and hurts and joys and pain. And wherever you are, we just wanna invite you to just take a breath. And I'm just gonna read a, a brief um, bit from a place of pause from one of my books um, called Live a Blaze and Light Up the World. Um, but the place of pause is really about just being still and surrendering and finding a glittering gift that's meant for you. So if you're not driving, <laughs> close your eyes and take a breath. Be still and surrender. Take a moment for silence, for stillness. Take some long, deep breaths. Relax your muscles from the tip of your head to your toes. Enjoy being, just being for a few moments. Stop moving, racing, thinking, planning. You belong here. You are loved. <sighs> oh, as we go, please share um, with anyone 
anyone and everyone you think would be inspired. The more we go, you might know more who that might be. Um, please comment, like what, what's capturing our attention? What questions do you have? We're not gonna be responding to the comments live, but I will go right after the live and go through every single one. So we really mean, Rachel and I mean for this to be a conversation that does not stop at the end of this live, but that we keep on going. So my dear sister, Rachel, thank you for joining us from Egypt. Thank you thank for you. Um, spending your Friday night here with us <laughs> or part of it. Um, and would you tell us, for those that missed um, the last live that we did, a bit about you and Transformation Textiles? Sure. Um, Transformation Textiles has been a dream and a concept that has grown and reiterated and changed over the years. And if I really look back in the mid it's over a decade of development and work. And it started way back um, in my early days of um, operating factory. And I saw these, these huge amounts of uh, wasted spaces. When we made a t-shirt or something and I, I had to cut out something, we were throwing away like these beautiful things by you know brands I shouldn't mention like Nike and Reebok. You know, those really expensive type of fabrics. And watching the waste heat just pile high and going, man, I wish I could figure out what else to do with that amazing fabric that I'm throwing out and it's going down to the, to the landfill. And about that same time of inquiry, going, man, I wish I could figure out something, is when we discovered the need of period poverty. And it struck me like out of left field. I felt ashamed because I didn't think, my goodness, what do women do? who do not have a secure supply of sanitary. And, you know, if ever you've been caught unawares, if you can't put that toilet paper in that public bathroom, you do not pass go, you go straight home. And that is what my sisters um, do. Sometimes even worse than that, they, they can't even do their life of collecting firewood, getting water for their families because of not having dignity. And, and so it was a journey of going, how can I help the most vulnerable woman? What does she need? And how can I use what I have in my hand, which was a lot of textile off -tops. And it led us on a journey of going, well, how can we affect the masses? Yeah. How can we just make a big boatload of them and ship them to where they need? Um, and well, in the trenches of helping those sisters, again, my what I felt was like a big shipload when I got to the ocean of need was actually a very small bucket. And so although you're excited that you're helping you can demoralize because you're going, but there's 800 million women that need this. And so yeah. even though you continue to go for this starfish, it counts. It began the process of going, yes, but how can I not just provide dignity, but how can I truly empower them? How can I, even when I have nothing left to give, there must be something. And that yeah. something is education. That something is going, I don't have any more fish, but here is a rusty fishing rod. Let me show you how it works. And you be amazed at what people can do. And so from my factory of knowledge and all of my resources, this was the fishing rod. It wasn't even a sewing machine. It was a needle and a thread. Um, saying, I walked your streets today in the refugee camp and I saw the most amazing t-shirt for sale for pennies. That's within their grasp. So when my bucket is empty, they can actually go and so it developed in me beyond what I can make beautifully and professionally in a commercial factory. How can I help my sisters right in the trench going, actually, there is fish in this camp and it's not in my distribution center, but let me teach you how to fish. So wow. that is the journey from trying to use my own humongous amount of resources, uh -huh. the feeling so inadequate of going, I don't have enough. Yep. To go, actually, there is enough. We just need to hold out a hand, not always offer a handout. Mm. 
So our, our kind of invitation to those watching right now is on this particular, in this particular conversation, the biggest ask is for you to share um, this video with people that are in a part of, of the world that does not have access to um, sanitary supplies that they, Rachel's going to show right now how um, using just a couple of found objects, women and girls can make what is needed to um, be able to go about their everyday life when they're having their period on their cycles yes. Um, to be able to go to school if they're so lucky, to be able to go to their job if they're so lucky, to be able to gather firewood and water and go about work in the refugee camp, wherever it is that they are. And your area of work, just, just for a quick context, is mostly Africa and the Middle East. Is that right, Rachel? Okay. That's correct. Um, and for those that do want to do a little more, please jump in and, and join in on our um, everyday philanthropy uh, invitation that is whether you have five bucks. 500 bucks, 5,000 bucks, every penny will be used um, and treasured by Rachel and her um, work with women in Africa and Middle East. So Rachel, take us, we have, we kind of joked around about this being like our cats, right? Um, and, oh, that's our friend Susan from Sierra Leone. Um, is that your phone or mine? <laughs> I have a computer, but I'm not. You don't know how to turn it off because we're in a live. So, so um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna close my Facebook page. That might okay. do it. I don't know. I apologize. Okay. I actually want to mention. So this friend Susan that is uh, ringing in right now, she is actually the inspiration for this call that we are even having because she reached out. She heard about Rachel, and she heard about the dignity kits that Rachel's um, organization had crafted. And she said, man, I want some of those dignity kits for my girls in Sierra Leone. And, um, you know, they're not able to stay in school because when they're on their cycles, they don't have a way to, you know, come to school. And through a long series of conversations, Rachel was like, man, shipping to Sierra Leone is very expensive and often things don't get where they're supposed to go. So Rachel in her innovative, brilliant mind said, and generous hearts said, how about we just do a demo and I'll show Susan and the world, whoever wants to watch how to do what we do and um, give away this um, innovation that she has crafted. So Susan, you are right on time. If you're not catching the live, I'll send you the replay girl. Thank you for being the catalyst for this. Um, okay, so Rachel, bring us to your arts and crafts like we'll dive in. Okay. Okay. So I need to first uh, show, um, this is what we make in the factory, okay? This is with commercial uh, machines and I'm gonna just point my um, camera down here. I've tried to put on a white background. And um, although I love this design, this is where I said my fishing bucket can go empty. And so when we looked and going, well, how can we make what others need with their own supplies. So when you're making uh, a sanitary pad, you need to consider a moisture barrier. If I just made a sanitary pad out of, this is a cotton t-shirt or uh, a cotton undershirt here, that is so absorbent that it's just going to absorb all the way through and it's going to soil my outer garment. So in terms of, um, there is usually in most places a used market. And although they might not need it, there seems to always be a supply of fleece of some sort, a polyester type of fleece. So I literally just um, got my, my scrap here of a, of a polyester fleece. This is not absorbent, um, but this is, um, it, it will hold uh, the, it will hold the moisture uh, very, very well. And uh, sorry, she's, she's calling. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mute myself and answer Susan's call. I think she's just Okay. <laughs> um, so, in terms of finding um, a polyester that it's gonna, it's gonna hold that moisture on one side. Um, it, it's not gonna be completely waterproof. But um, menstrual flow is a lot more thick than water. And so by having a layer of, of a fleece, 
or having even two layers of it, it's going to form the same type of moisture barrier that we have in our factory. Now, in terms of um, this is done with a very fancy wing and it's really, really nice. And it's done with, um, with, with poppers or, or snaps, which sometimes are available in those third world countries or developing countries. Um, so if they are, great. There's also those little sew-on ones that can be done. And so how a reusable, it just wraps around the middle of the underwear and it can affix to any, any shape of underwear. And in terms of patterns, you could essentially get one um, from an always pad. I find that the most common size um, that in most East African countries that I have visited, there is always or their competitor. And these are basically the two sizes that always goes. They have an extra long and then they have just uh, a medium or a medium flow. This typically can be um, about 11 inches and this can be 12 or 13. But when you think of yourself, if you wear pads, what is the length of even a regular disposable? Chances are for most of your cycle, it's this size. And so um, you don't, depending on the woman, so if you are making it, you can basically tell her you know your needs. These are, if you're making a pattern template, getting those two are going to give you your general sizes that you need. Now, the wings are actually not even necessary. Um, it is an extra step in it. It requires more fabric and requires more time. And so what we have shown some women is the only thing that you actually need are security bands. So we have, you can use the, the hem of a t-shirt. There, you could use any type of ribbon that could be, that you want it to be soft and you want it again to not be cotton because cotton will absorb and it could take it all the way to the side and you could leak around. So this was taken from a hem of like a, of an old sports t-shirt. There's a lot of soccer jerseys that are there. Those are usually made out of polyester, a great thing for, for making something like that. And so with these security bands that you can easily sew with just a needle and a thread, you need to just sew them kind of, um, well, if this is a pair of ladies' underwear, there's about six inches um, right where the underwear fold. So in terms of wherever that, wherever that lie is, where would you normally put a pad? And so each woman is different and they can, uh, lots of times we give one of our underwear as a pattern or you can print them out. There's lots available online. And so they sew, that security band right in the crotch of the underwear. That way you could use any type of cloth. Um, we recommend, um, again, cotton undershirts are very, very um, common in most countries. And so this is the part that is going to absorb. This is the absorbent towel part of your pad. And so by, I just, pre-cut some squares here um, so that you can see. Um, sorry, it's white on white. But those squares can be used together. I prefer a 10 inch by a 10 inch square. These ones were cut a bit smaller. But if they're in one, if they're like in a rectangle, then they can be folded and just rolled to make a sanitary pad. It doesn't have wings and you don't need wings when you have these security bands. And so even if you don't find the fancy dancy fleece to make that waterproof barrier, if you have a thick enough towel and you have enough of them, you can just change as often as you want to be fresh and clean. And so without any further ado, with only a needle and thread and a pair of scissors, you can cut up a t-shirt 
you can cut up the hem of a, of a soccer shirt and you can make any pair of underwear into period underwear that could hold those pads. And I'm gonna just do a, a shake test, if you will, that if they're done properly, it's not going to shift. And so even without wings, with a lot of activity, that thing isn't going to move. If I didn't have those security wings or bands, even that same thing, it can flop and it could fall out. And so this simple uh, idea of these security bands are what can keep any type of absorbent cloth where it needs to be. Um, and I'm, I'm hoping that, yeah, we'll be able to use these seeds of exchange tutorial for many people to just watch. Um, one other tip you'll see in this particular pair of underwear, the way the crotch is on this, this security band was quite wide. And if um, what you actually need is just the width of where that pad is. So this one is nice and narrow on this side. This one, uh, I'm sorry about the camera, but we had, there was just a few extra um, stitches here so that there's really only a three inch um, thing right in the center so that uh, this thing wouldn't slosh around in the back. And so by having the right security bands in the right place, any type of handkerchief, cut up t-shirt, or, or towel um, can be used. And the beautiful thing about this design actually, that actually has advantage even over my most beautiful um, one we make at the factory is it doesn't look like a pad. Yeah. So if that was hanging on a clothesline, it doesn't look like anything. Hmm. It is just there. And in terms of water scarcity, by being making it able to be one layer and then folded, you can achieve any thickness of protection you need for, for what you need for that day versus going, oh, well, if we're going to make reusable pads, let's make them as thick as those puppies can go because we want them to hold a whole lot. That's not the concept. The concept, even amongst the most pampered princess in whatever place that is, you want to be fresh and clean. So even when we buy our most expensive premium disposable pad, it's not about wearing it till its capacity is full. Who ever wants to wear a pad from blue line to blue line? No, thank you. We <laughs> like to think as often as we want, as our comfort and as our finances allow. But what's exciting is that these women, they, the, play, the uh, playing field is leveled in terms of you can be fresh and clean anytime you want. Because if I, if I step away from the, uh, the close-up, if this was the t-shirt, look at how many I could make. So there's one liner. There is two liners. There is three liners. There is four liners. And then you can think of my back. And then you could make something with the sleeves. You know, and so in terms of, there is so much ab soft, absorbent fabric right available in most localities. And sometimes it's just the design. I have seen really uncomfortable pads because someone has thought, well, yeah, we should sew it this thick, you know, right from the get go. And then trying to wash that, that's like, and how do you dry that? And so by making it actually customizable, it does many things. It, it's easily washable. It requires less water. It requires less effort to dry. In some places, it's rainy season or there's no direct sunlight. There is nowhere that you can um, hang that um, without it being a problem. And so by having something that doesn't look like a pad, is actually to an advantage. Like mm -hmm. one, one is kind of obvious as to what it is. Um, 
so this was the first thing that we've talked about in review is how to make an absorbent liner. And this is as easy as cutting up a t-shirt, cutting up, chopping up the sleeves. And what's funny is that what I have noticed in these secondhand markets, the men's triple XL t-shirt seems to be a common thing that we in the West like to give to those less fortunate. And so actually that is, um, I didn't find a, uh, a men's XL, but I found uh, a large XL t-shirt uh, undershirt in my closet and just showing you, look at how much fabric that is. And so instead of us trying to go to Marshall's Fabric or whatever expensive store and us trying to buy fabric and make these liners and try to send them somewhere and then that receiving person has to sometimes pay 100% import tax plus all the shipping plus you know how many bales of t-shirts if we just wired them the money it's not about just well we want to do something I get that but actually the fishing rods are right by the fishing lake we do not need to import sardines we can give them fresh fish and we can give them fishing rods now there there's certain things that we can provide that they might not be able to have and some of the countries we're working at they love to get a few of these to have the really nice shield all done for them but others are going we can't even wait for that we do not have the finances or whatever and so you don't even need this all you need is these security bands um to, to create a period panty that can hold any absorbent fabric. I want to review again, what is an absorbent fabric? When it's for the absorbent towel, you want it to be like cotton. You want it to be viscose. You do not want polyester. You don't want fleece to be the absorbent um, towel. Um, a fleece, again, a polyester fleece is a great option to try to give it a level of waterproofness, but this can be hot, it can lead to bulk. And so you just need to judge that wisely. Um, the other thing that people think, oh, and I've seen a lot is making these, you know, and a lot of the locals make menstrual cloths out of a tightly woven uh, something. It's so tight that it's actually hard to absorb. Something that's soft, and loose knit, like a cotton t-shirt, is the perfect type of fabric that most every place has access to, um, to create that towel. Um, the, the waterproof part is definitely a nice feature, um, uh, made of fleece, made of a tight woven something. Uh, some people have resorted to like plastic bags I don't recommend that. Um, one, if you have ever put a bag to your mouth, it's not breathable. And um, I'm a very practical tester, so I have made and I've worn out of plastic. And I can tell you it's miserable. It mm -hmm. is very moist and you can feel the heat. And those two combinations, heat and moisture, are perfect combination for infection. And so in terms of we want things to be breathable, so a fleece, I can breathe through it, but it's gonna hold the thickness of the menstrual soil um, very effectively. Or forgo it all together and just have to change the cotton more often. But when you have the cotton, Make sure that it's soft and that it's um, uh, very stretchable or, or um, not like a, a rough towel. I've seen lots of people make these and when you line dry like a cotton loop towel, oh, it's scratchy. It's, it's a natural loofah <laughs> and that can be irritating. Uh, so when you're thinking of design, you really need to just jump into those shoes and going, where am I gonna wash it? How much water is it going to take? What will that fabric feel like when it's dried? 
air dried? Is it gonna be rough and scratchy or is it going to be soft and supple? And so these are some of the things, it can be any color. Um, and that is actually the fun thing to see these ladies come out with these beautiful designs. I saw, uh, I wish I had a picture ready in Malawi, these teenagers, they took these high school, um, I don't know who it was, it could have been Texas or whatever, and they had like the logo right on the butt of the underwear they made. Like, I mean, you can actually <laughs> be creative. It was, it was fun. Um, Wait, so we can't see you. Put your head down a little so we can see your oh, sorry, there we go. Okay. Uh, so in terms of, there's absolutely nothing wrong with white fabric. Um, it actually comes out quite clean. There is nothing wrong with other colors. It does not have to be white. Um, and so this is where women, once they get into it, um, they can be quite creative and uh, it's fascinating to see what colors they try to coordinate together. And I have seen that over and over again from women I've worked with in prisons to women right in the refugee camp. And their course of, their definition of what goes together is much different than mine. And yet it mattered. Yeah. And we're talking about a sanitary pad and we began to laugh because all of a sudden, all the rules were gone. We're going, wow, we can actually color coordinate. And it, it made them giggle and it gave them dignity of going, I have choice. I have dignity. Yeah. Can you tell us, Rachel, like, I know we need to wrap up here in a minute, but could you tell us one, one or two stories of, of what you have observed over the years of um, kind of a story of impact as women have been able to craft these from found you know fabric in the camps or in their villages and and just what what do you notice changes in the lives of women when they have access to these this tool um, you know i i want to talk about this one uh mother and she had three daughters and um when i showed her this concept and uh she was actually a product tester for some of these going well can you try this and can you try that? And um, it was just like this glow of that I can be fresh and clean and I can afford to allow my three daughters to be fresh and clean anytime yeah. they want. And that creates more capacity for us to buy some more root vegetables. Wow. You know, so it was, it was beyond just her own because women we don't self-care we give to everyone else first so i know that she suffered the most and she made sure her daughters had it but when you have three daughters plus yourself and yeah. you're trying to ration out your sweet potato and yeah. now to see that smile of going not only do i have enough but i feel comfortable during mm. my period you know wow. and and again um the washability, I mean, they haul their water, they, you know, do those things. And so seeing the impact of not only am I more comfortable, not only more, I am more confident, but I have more sweet potatoes now that I can feed my family. So mm -hmm. it, it provided on multiple of levels. And um, that was really, um, it made it all these different trials well worthwhile. Okay. That's amazing, by the way. Amazing, amazing. Um, one thing came to mind when you were telling that story. How often, or has it happened, where you go in and you share um, this simple but very brilliant innovation of yours? Like, how often are women already doing that? Are, are they using fabric, or have they found a way to craft this? Yeah. So one of the things that I have found. Um, they have they have been doing that and it's just been more bulky and so they love oh. the design but one of the things that I have um, noticed is they would take like this huge bolt of fabric mm. and they would in a way take a cord and wrap it around their waist and they'd have this gigantic loincloth yeah kind of clean so it was very, very bulky, yeah. but with all that bulk, it only equals one change. Right. And so then when they had to wash it, they actually had all of this 
fabric yeah. to walk. And yet it equaled this. And so yeah. when they saw the simple design, the lights went off because they're like, I actually can take all of this that I already have and I could make four or five right. of, of these simple designs. And right. it's not hot, it's not bulky, and it works. And so, yeah, many, many of them have a, a type of, uh, if you will, holder, which yeah. then they try to place something. And yeah. a lot of times it's, yeah, it's like a cord. Yeah. Um, the other pictures that I have seen them do is in a similar thing, but now imagine dry grass, hard woven like a braid. Right. Now put that between your legs. Right. <laughs> so them just seeing yeah. like, oh my goodness, I oh, have gosh. it right here. Yeah. Um, so yeah. It's, it's, they have used cloth. Using cloth is not a big thing. Just some of their designs weren't as, uh, if you will, human centered or um, right. usable. Right. Wow. Thank you. Do you have any other pieces you want to share in the tutorial? Um, did you get everything? Yeah, I, I think in terms of I love, kind of as a lasting thing, I have met yeah. so many incredible seamstresses and crafters in Canada and North America who, when they see the simple design, they want to just run down the road and make 75 of these little puppies tomorrow. Yeah, right. Or they're showing me like, oh, let me show you my closet full of fabric. Can I send it to you? And when I see it without trying to discourage them, yeah, this is what I would love to say. And I have tried to say it to some, but it broke their heart because they wanted to make this. How can you help you? Like, no, I don't want to send my money. I want to do something with my hands. Like, you know, and so yeah. I was trying to marry the two. How can I help the crafter or the seamstress in North America who wants to do something, not just send her money. Yeah. And I went back to, I'm a selfish woman and I always like to eat my, have my cake and eat it too. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm one of those. I'm a both and not an either or. And so here's my cake and eat it too. Take your crafting, make some gorgeous something that you can sell for a hundred, two hundred dollars Make that crazy quilt. Sell it to someone who actually will buy it. Do not send your crazy quilt to me in Egypt for my refugee woman. Sell it and send me the money. And it's not that we value the money. No, because you would not have had that money unless you made that crazy quilt, that labor of love, right? But you could do more with your fabric, more with your skills to make something, sell it, and send the money to the people on the ground because... Don't send your sewing machines. They can, and sometimes it's more culturally appropriate to have 20 women come to a class. You come to my health class and I'm gonna teach you about menstruation. And while we're all in this circle sharing, we're going to also make this. And so when you try to bless us and do it for us, you actually rob us of the empowerment opportunity. And so as your crafters and extremely skilled women and men in North America, use your skills, figure out a way to have that fundraiser or to sell those crafts and work with organizations such as Transformation Textiles. There's many others like us, but if, if you wanted a trusted source on this subject matter, we have people on the ground that are fully capable and actually you do them a disservice when we try to do what they can do. So if that was my lasting tip on what this how to, it was not for you to do it, but for you to understand. And then when you have that person like in Sierra Leone who can't afford to have our product shipped to them or that that's not feasible going, oh, I know you, you need to connect here because they can teach you how to do it. And you can use your money much more effectively by giving them the tools, giving them those fish rod versus trying to ship them fish. Beautiful. Thank you. And that's actually how we like to wrap, wrap up this conversation is always, right? It's back to 
those of y'all that have honored us, honored us by joining and listening and being a part of this conversation. And so please be a part of the conversation. Please, what questions do you have? What ideas do you have? What offerings do you have? What needs do you have? Post them all because in this community, if we just keep that loop conversation loop going, there are going to be people that are going to be able to respond to what you need, to respond to what you have to offer. And what I really, really love that I want to kind of um, land on is the wisdom that Rachel just mentioned about the importance of re if we really want to make a difference, we have to be tightly connected with people that are living among, that are a part of just everyday life with the people we're looking to love on and serve and make a difference in the lives of, because we have heard of just an ocean of stories of, of bad development, of toxic charity, of, of people with big hearts that um, haven't had this nugget of wisdom that Rachel just shared of, of what to do, of, of how to, how to um, mm -hmm. make life better for our brothers and sisters around the world and to, to use whatever time and money and beautiful crafts or whatever offerings you have to actually honor your time and like make a difference with what you have to offer. So please let's just, let's not stop giving cause we don't know how it's gonna make a difference but let's just ask a bunch of questions, find amazing people like Rachel to partner with and be able to say, oh, kind of connect the dots in a very wise, close to the ground, close to people way. So um, please share what you are committed to do anew or to think anew, or um, yes, please share this video. Um, and, um, and let's just keep going together. Um, sometimes we need to be reminded of, for me, you know, be reminded that there are many millions of women in the world that can't go to Walgreens or can't go to the pharmacy up the street and pick up disposable pads so that they, they can keep going to work and going to school and cooking and doing their thing. So let's also be mindful and grateful for whatever, if, if you are like me and you have um, uh, plenty um, let's be grateful for that. If you're not, and you need some extra love and some support and some prayer, as always, post below, um, private message, Rachel and I, and we will pray with and for you and send love because that's part of what we do. So, um, Rachel, one last word from you. What, what's burning on your heart to share as a last little wrap up with our friends? Um, again, I want to just share something candidly, um, and again, I don't mean to offend any other faith, but I, I, I am a believer in the Father. And mm -hmm. one of the things that I have been experiencing myself is absolute surrender. And even yeah. as early as this morning, just talking to him and going, God, I have been trying and I want to help you. <laughs> so much where sometimes we have to stop and going, God, what's happening in my life right now does not make sense. Yeah. But I absolutely, absolutely surrender it all to you. And so whatever that is for you, um, there, you know, we're all so unique and all of our struggles, they are real and you're not alone, yeah. um, but there are people that love you. And there is a father that loves you. And you might know, I don't understand that concept, but he is there. And um, just um, by allowing him to have every part of you, you'll be amazed at what he can do. Thank you. Thank you. All right, friends, we're going to wrap it up with a blessing, a reminder that you matter you are loved, you belong, we belong to each other. And when these things weave together into a tapestry, um, we make a difference. And it's not hard and laborious because we're doing it together. So um, I love you guys. 
please, please share, please comment below and um, let us know what's impacting you. Blessings on your day. Bye y'all. Bye.